Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today what I'd like to talk about is, I'd like to talk about why flat feet are more than just a foot problem. And I think it's a really important topic of conversation because the root cause or the, the apparent root cause of a lot of problems um, are flat feet or collapsed arches. So whether you have um, Achilles issues, whether you suffer from plantar fasciitis, shin splints, uh, bunions even, you know, uh, navicular stress fractures can be all the way up to the knee in terms of ACL problems, you know, meniscal issues, arthritis, patellofemoral joint problems, ITB syndrome. Um, coming up further, we're looking at sort of hip impingement and a lot of other issues associated with that. And we can even extend that up to lower back dysfunction. But, but the point I wanted to make with this is uh, we often see flat feet as a contributing factor to a lot of dysfunction, and that's true. But the problem that I see clinically is that we often narrow in on the foot and say, look, you need to get your arches stronger, maybe get a ball under there to free up that tissue, maybe do some calf strengthening. Um, we're very sort of narrow focused on trying to improve the function of that arch. And we go as far as to say, look, here's a, an orthotic or a shoe insert, or here's a pair of shoes that you need to wear that has arch support. But what we're, what we're ultimately doing here is we're we're sort of missing the point and going after symptomatic treatments. And as a result of that, what we see is that if you're someone who has flat feet or you have to wear orthotics, you're stuck with that for, forever. We look at people and we say, look, you are now someone who has to wear orthotics or you're just someone who has flat feet. But what we know um, when we look deeper into this, that there's actually a bigger picture at play that if you go after that bigger picture, you can start to restore that normal function back to the arch, start to reverse that flattening and that collapsing and if that's a problem that sort of relates to other issues that you have with your feet or your, your knees or your hips or your back or anything like that, you can start to slowly chisel away at the, those sort of defining features and get to the root cause of why that's there in the first place. So, so we can't do that if you're looking at flat feet as a foot problem. Um, so hopefully by the end of this video, you'll, you'll have a really good understanding about what causes a flat foot and then maybe two really simple exercises that you can work on to try and uh, get at the, the cause of that dysfunction. So before we get into it, um, obviously uh, to support us, we'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like below if you're going to enjoy the video and you find it useful. Uh, and if you could also consider subscribing. Uh, YouTube basically demands that the more interaction that we get, the more people that will see these videos. So the goal to sort of help more and more people with this, you know, it'd be great if you could help and support us in that way. Um, so this video sort of spreads a little bit wider um, with your help. So. So basically, uh, getting back to this idea, what we wanna make sure that you're thinking of is we wanna show you the mechanism that creates a flat foot and then some little avenues to go down to try and rectify that. So how that looks, so if I can get you to you know, pop your shoes off uh, and stand up and, and look down at your feet, the first thing you wanna look at is the direction that your feet are pointing. Now, this will make more sense in a second, but a lot of people that have flat feet also have feet that tend to point away from straight. Um, and this is significant for a number of reasons, but which we'll get to in a second. But if you're someone who has, who has flat feet, so if I, if I flatten my arches here, what you'll notice if you paid attention is you'll see that my whole leg has to rotate in order for that arch to collapse. So if you're someone who has a collapsed arch, it's not that your leg is perfect and it's just the arch at the bottom has collapsed. Clinically, it, ten it tends to be the whole leg so almost dumping inwards and internally rotating. And when we come back to flat feet or a feet that turn out, sorry, often the feet that turn out are a consequence to sort of perpetuate that same motion. So when you're walking, for example, um, it's that you still have to walk forwards, but now that your foot is turned out, you're essentially walking inside the foot with your foot in a different position. So and it sort of perpetuates that collapsing of the arch, but loads up all the tissue in your leg differently. And the reason why this is so important, and the reason why I need you guys to think about this as a leg problem, is if you watch what happens at my ankle and watch what happens at my hip, that rotation, that derotation takes place at those joints. So my hip joint rotates inwards, and my ankle joint rotates inwards and also collapses. So my foot isn't, ro isn't moving here, my foot's stuck on the ground but my shin is rotating inwards as well as my, my hip. And the reason why this happens, it happens for two major, um, two major reasons. The first is ankle stiffness. So if your ankle is stiff, 
your body has to work around that stiffness if you're trying to find that range of motion if you don't have it. So if your ankle is missing that normal range of motion, instead of being able to express that normal range of motion in a really strong, stable plane, your body's gonna run into the end of that ankle range and have to find a way around that to keep going and to get past it. So how that looks from the side is that if your ankle gets stiff here, but you need to get further, the only way that you can do that is if your body goes around it and finds a new path. And which, it helps for you to achieve your goal in the moment, but long term, it creates this pattern of dumping inwards and closing down the hip. Now the second aspect of this, which often gets missed, is that in order to keep your knee externally rotated and put everything in a good position, inclusive of lifting up your arch, and if you can see this, the arch lifts as my knee rotates out, you need the muscular strength and control to hold the knee out there, but more importantly, you need the range of motion to be able to get out there as well. So a lot of people who are lacking internal and external rotation at the hip are often dumping into a position that their body doesn't like long term. And the consequence of that is an arch that collapses. So when we talk about this with, with people with flat feet, I guess the conversation that we need to have is we need to, to say that a collapsed arch is just a consequence of the broader mechanical dysfunction. It's just one piece of the machine that's forced to do something different because you're compensating for hidden things, stiffness, tightness, and, and potential weakness. So, so again, if we want to make sure that we readdress that arch and make sure that you used to be someone that had flat feet or used to have to wear orthotics, we need to make sure you're improving the mobility and the strength of your hip and the mobility of your ankle as well. So. Uh, as we said, we want to give you two simple things to start working on that. So before we get to that, the first thing that I'll get you to practice, just so you can appreciate this, is if you stand up with your feet straight, all I want you to practice is screwing your knees out. So all you want to do is just take a, a moment to understand where your knees start and how it feels to rotate them sort of outwards. You can do that with sort of straight, straight legs. You can do that with bent knees if you want to. But what you'll feel is, is as you rotate those knees out, you should feel the muscles in your glutes start to work. You should feel them kick up and activate. So this is important. So if you're standing around talking, uh, if you're not doing much else, it's a really good habit to get into where you screw those knees out and get these muscles to work because what you're essentially doing is pulling your arches up from your hips. And what we can do to reinforce this, this gets to sort of the, the motor control and the strength aspect, is when you screw those knees out and you take this into a squat, you should notice that your knees go out. And a lot of people when they squat tend to see that their knees will track inwards as, it, as you work around those restrictions at the ankle and the hip. But we want to facilitate a squat where your knees go out and nothing changes at your arch. You should feel like your arch is relatively similar regardless of what you're doing. So being able to practice that motor control is a really simple way to start to tell your body that you value that knee out position and that externally rotated position. And the more you do that, the more often that arch is gonna be lifted up and it's gonna to get to the root cause of some of those dysfunctions that you'll have as a consequence of that. <clears throat> so the second thing that we wanna go through here is we wanna make sure that we free up your ankle. So so we've done this a number of times on the channel already, but it's a really significant stretch. So it's the banded ankle stretch. So normally we want to have the band tied to something uh, and around your ankle, but pulling straight behind. But for the purpose of the video, let's just imagine that the band's going backwards. But the idea here is you just want to bend that back ankle as far as you feel comfortable. And again, if we're looking at this from, from the front, so again, imagine the band's pulling backwards. You want to make sure that you're stretching that ankle in that externally rotated position, trying to bust through that, that rustiness, that long-term stiffness at the ankle. It's always, the knee's always going to want to track inwards and collapse that arch to get around that restriction. So you want to make sure that that knee is out. So basically in this position, just want to bend that back knee, make sure that knee's out. We just want to stay here for, a, for 30 seconds or so. So I'll just stay here for a second. what you should hopefully see once I've done this. So ideally you do that for a couple of minutes, but what you should hopefully see when you do this is your ability to get into a better position 
should improve. So for me, I feel like I can get out into that, that knee out position a little bit better than before. It doesn't feel like there's as much restriction in the way. So it often sounds strange that to fix an arch issue, we're going after other things, but a stiff ankle and a tight hip um, can often be the reason why your body has to default in that, in that position. So bring up the ankle, working on trying to externally rotate and re-engage those muscles, really important. And then the last piece of the puzzle, as we spoke about, is we wanna make sure that you've got that rotation back in your hip, <coughs> excuse me. And for me, one of the best exercises for this, and you can do this standing uh, with your leg up on a bed or a couch or a table, whatever works for you, but you can also do this on the floor. And it's just the pigeon stretch. So basically you wanna get yourself into a position where you are not kicking the plant behind you, but essentially, we're trying to have your shin almost at 90 degrees, depending on what you can do. And we want to make sure that you drop down on that position. So again, you can imagine if there's a bed or a seat underneath here, and my legs on the ground standing up, it's much easier. But you want to try and keep your back nice and straight. <clears throat> we're looking for some tightness sort of in the back pocket, the base of the, um, the base of the back where the glutes are. This is the area that tends to be tight and limits that range of motion. So like any muscular stretch, and I should say the ankle stretch we did before is a joint stretch. It goes after the deep joint. This is going after muscular tightness. So what we want to do here is we want to take a deep breath in. And we want to squeeze and tense, squeeze those muscles, tense your glutes, you know, push your foot back into the ground for five to 10 seconds. And then relax. And you should find that you can drop down a little bit deeper than before. Deep breath in, squeeze. 10 seconds, you know, tense your glutes, push your foot down, and then relax. And again, you should better drop down deeper. So we want to keep going through that until you feel like you, you stop making change. <clears throat> and then we should see again, your ability to, to put that leg in a better position, particularly when you squat, you should then see that your ability to get that leg out improves. So your capacity to put your arch in a better position improves, and then you can practice that new range of motion with something as simple as a squat. So, so as you said right at the start, it's really important that we stop looking at flat feet as an arch problem and a foot problem. Instead, we need to take a step back and understand that if the leg itself is dysfunctional and your body's dealing with some accrued issues from regular things like sitting and heeled shoes and all the boring things, then the consequence of that can be flat feet and then from that, you can sort of express itself in a range of different ways. A lot of different pains and injuries and dysfunctions occur because not only because the foot and the flat collapse, uh, the arch collapses, but the entire leg is asking that to happen. So hopefully that's some food for thought. Um, obviously, it's important to understand that concept if you're trying to fix something. So we're not just looking for symptomatic treatments to help your pain. We're going to take you down the path to solving your dysfunction. So. And like a lot of issues, we can't do that unless you're understanding why that, that sort of happens. So, so again, hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you did find that helpful, as I said before, you know, please leave a like below. Consider subscribing if you're new. Just help support us, support the video, get this information out to more people. Um, but as we always do, these videos are coming out relatively regularly. So if you have any questions or any requests as well, if you have a specific issue that you, you just don't feel like is, is very well explained to you, leave it in the comments below or follow us on the socials um, and we'll try and make a video about that just to make sure that this content is specific to you guys. Um, but until then, I'm out of breath for some reason, but um, hopefully it was worthwhile and we'll talk to you soon.